Welcome. This is Barry Jones from Angelic Wisdom, and we're here for our monthly angel scope for the sign of Leo for the month of June 2023. So before we begin, I would just like to welcome everyone back to this monthly series and to also welcome anyone who is likely new to our Angelic Wisdom community. As a reminder, before we start, I just would like to ask you to first subscribe, select the all notification bell, like, dislike, and please leave comments if you feel called to do so. It's been really incredible reading the wisdom that each and every one of you who are, particip who are participating have shared. If you'd like to get an angel reading with me um, during the course of watching this video, um, you can go to my current website, theangelschool.com slash services, that particular page, and the link for that you can find in the description area below this, um, this video. Any other links that I might um, mention um, will be there as well. So currently right now, um, which is sort of ongoing, um, there is a first time promotional offer for first time readers on my website and there's also additional um, sessions that you could choose as well that might uh, suit your needs as you see fit. If you just like to um, contribute to the channel um, of a donation of any kind, um, you can um, check out my PayPal me link which you will find um, again below the video in the description area. Also, the first link that you will see there will be the monthly general reading for June 2023. Um, it's, I really highly advise you to go and watch that. Um, the angels have are highlighting the energy of Gay Pride Month and and what that what gift um, this group of people represents to all of you um, and as well as myself um, as a gay person and I think it's just really enlightening um, what's being shared there um, so please go check that out. Um, and um, hopefully before continuing to watch this video. All right, so let's take a deep breath together now and just really tune into our heart space. Just breathe out and they write frequency. Just feel the frequency. So I've been seeing like a lot of different messages. And what I feel like right now, Leo, that there's a lot popping off for you. There's a lot of the writing the word people. There's a lot of people coming in and out of your life. Um, and, you know, it's all good, ultimately. And But what they really want you to pay attention to right now is the frequency. First of all, your own frequency. And then the vibrations or frequencies that match your own. As this will indicate an alignment, a purpose for that interaction. So paying attention to the frequencies, um, events, people, um, ideas that resonate with you so that you can really center yourself in a position where you're really able to 
no, no, they're, they're interrupting me. So to create this safe space, number one, where you always know that you are fine. That's the word they wrote, fine. So that you always know that you are fine. Everything is fine, right? You know, like, don't get sort of caught up in drama where you might be feeling like um, it's urgent for you to do something. And if you don't handle it, it's this X, Y, Z is going to happen. They really want you to be centered in your own frequency of peace. And to get to that frequency of peace, you really have to practice um, surrendering. Surrendering, trying not to control everything, um, you know, not trying to fix everything as if it's all on you. Because there are many components that are in operation, making allowing things to happen for you and you are just a component of that you're a very important component of that because whatever your true desire intention whatever clarity you have that's what's drawing magnetizing everything towards you and you can do that from this place of peace. And I feel like that disruption to that peace is because we are always trying to make everything right out in the external world with everybody else except ourselves, instead of being clear about what we want, what our desires are, what our goals are, and being determined to and commit it to to focusing on them and not letting all that other energy just sort of distract or pull you in another direction sort of suddenly like just because something happens unexpectedly don't have a knee-jerk reaction that um sort of makes you the fixer or makes you the one drawn into the drama that you didn't really want. And that you, you know, it's like we get pulled into things that have nothing to do with what we want. And that's because we have inside a clear intention of each day about what we want and what it is that we need to focus on that allows us to have what we want. So we once we know what we want, then we got to be clear about what needs to be done in order to fulfill that want. And it's that lack of clarity and or inconsistency in your practice daily around intention and goals that causes you to be susceptible to unexpected events that are so far outside of the parameters of your goals and where you just feel like at the end exhausted sort of used and total and you start experiencing a total loss of direction, confusion. So make sure that you, make sure that you find that peace within. That comes after you've surrendered everything. You're not trying to react, respond, or do anything. What you're trying to do is get to that place where in that peace, you are able to experience yourself and what your true priorities are at the moment. 
Now, one of the angel numbers that I saw, I found the, myself that I grabbed the book and I was like, why am I, why do I have this in my hand? But I remember the number. It's 688. It says, your joy and gratitude keep the gates of abundance open for you. So continue to focus on what you have and you will attract even more into your life. Now that's a way to pull yourself to withdraw from those distractions is to focus on what you have. Focus on what you have. Let's say you don't have your favorite food. Like this week I didn't buy my my blue corn chips at Trader Joe's. And I did it on purpose because I thought, you know, I eat them in one one day or two, two bags. And then, you know, I enjoy, enjoy them. But then after they're not there, I miss them terribly. And mm, are they the best thing for my, for my waistline? <laughs> so sometimes, you know, like the diet that I have, when I bring things in the diet that aren't good for me because I'm wanting to be distracted in some other way, because that's what we're doing it for, whether we realize it or not, then the diet that ordinarily sort of really fulfills and sustains me in an incredible way because it's what my body needed. And when you start adding the things, other things in there, they start pulling you away from that sort of um, alignment and cooperation, cooperation that you have with yourself and your body. And so now, um, with things like chips or or some ice cream, now you start wanting, you start like, you know, wanting, and it becomes a, a distraction to where you need to be focused. And, and so, I guess the point I'm getting here at is just like this is with everything else, you have to start focusing on what you have, focusing on what you need and what's good for you. And it just takes a little bit of discipline, commitment, before you find yourself um, no longer experiencing those those compulsions that distract so why is it that we aren't able to focus on our goals? Why do they have to be so difficult to achieve? Why does it take so long to achieve them? And, and it's really around a fear maybe of succeeding because in succeeding, you expand your plate of responsibilities. And sometimes we're afraid that we don't know how, that we don't know if we're going to be able to show up consistently enough. And even just that conversation is total ego and illusion to even be so worried about the future and your future behavior and your future, um, well, yeah, behavior, there's something else I can't think of the word right now, that you would assume, allow your ego to make assumptions like this, that you entertain and feed all of your energy and time into. Wrong kind of investment. And so if we are investing our energy in to lack in such great proportions, then that might be a valid reason for the fear of or that one might have around finances or not being financially stable or secure. All right, let's take a look at the Archangel that we're working with this month. And it's Archangel Mallory, Mallory, excuse me. And the message on the card says, remember who you are. Take action when you are ready. It almost gives you a sense of pause. Now, Archangel Mallory 
is the twin flame of Archangel Uriel, the Archangel of Peace. And clear thoughts, clarity. And Archangel Mallory and Archangel Uriel um, work with the gold Christ light, but they also this deep burgundy color. And so one of the things that's really important that you can hear in that message is like, whoa, 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 stop, stop. What are you rushing for? What are you driving yourself crazy for? What are you chasing? Why are you chasing? Remember who you are. Take action when you're ready. That means take action when you are feel aligned within yourself. Because that's the moment that you'll get the best outcomes. And it's not about just waiting. But this is all to say, stop cycling, spinning out your ego's illusions. And get in, a, get in that clear space, clear mind, that, 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 that's the word they used earlier. That space, make space for inner peace to come to the surface and then get back on track. Focus on your the intention of your goal. Focus on what you need to accomplish for those goals to um, be fulfilled or come to, to fruition. Now let's take a look at the Major Arcana card. All right, this is telling us what's a major theme, lessons, um, and influences in your sort of shaping the outcomes in your life this month. And it's the wheel. So the wheel represents momentum, forward momentum, right? Change, traveling, um, moving. So as card says, progress. Now, the luck keyword is associated with the planet Jupiter, which this card um, has been astrologically uh, um, associated with. And so this is about abundance and expansion. All of this still represents change because in order for that to occur, change has to happen in order for expansion to happen, growth to happen. So things are definitely moving in the right direction, or they can move in the right direction. And so I would caution you to really, and here's this, this wheel of where the angels, the cherubs are surrounding it, and so that portal is almost inviting you to walk through it. And it's in, in a sense to walk through that any portal of opportunity that comes to you, no matter how much you're afraid, you can step through that portal safely. Now I'm seeing the word confusion. And so, you know, don't pay attention to the external stuff. Don't focus on that. Don't worry about that. Remember who you are. When you remember who you are, when you act from that place of inner alignment and peace, then what you need inside of your soul surfaces for you. And transcendent opportunities and solutions, creative ideas, responses come right through you. And they write in an exceptional way, bringing exceptional joy. And they confirm that by writing yes. I love when they do that. Okay, the three of air. <laughs> so there is a lesson here, a painful lesson that is going to bring about um, spiritual growth. So one, I see or feel that there's something in some way you're fighting 
something in your heart. And you've been here many times before. It's really the fear of success. Because there's an opportunity for you to succeed, but you don't believe it. You're having imposter syndrome. Any doubt is like striking yourself in the heart, striking yourself in the heart. When someone else doubts you, it's like striking you in the heart. Because the, the doubts do not resonate with your higher self. They don't compute. It's not understood because the ego created that, not your higher self, not the divine. And they're writing it, it's around trying, the right word, pleasing. You want to please everybody. You want to please all the people in your life. Every single one. But they write, they only want you to focus on pleasing yourself. They said this is the most sage wisdom they could ever give you. Because once you start learning to please yourself, to only please yourself, and this is what's so important about the other message in the general reading, especially around sexuality, the sacral chakra, creativity, an appetite for life, desire, all of this is in that chakra. And this idea of respect for one another, people that you don't understand, who are different from you. Unconditional love. This is the key to unconditional love. And this is the key to moments of being able to heal, turn moments like this around for yourself. When you practice that, you release yourself from your own inner criticism that keeps sort of creating these painful wounds at great moments of opportunity. Like you keep reliving that disappointment over and over again. So this, the universe is orchestrating sort of these really incredible opportunities right, right now for you. But there are some really important lessons, karmic lessons, that you have to work through on purpose so that you no longer carry this forward in your life. Just believe and trust and all will be well. You will be safe. All right, so I send you lots of love and they write the word courage. <laughs> There's a lot of talking as I begin and say, okay, goodbye, and then they come up with more words. Um, they wrote the word tower, so lots of courage. And you know, tower moments, I, had, I don't know if I'm, the other day when it came to me, I mean, we all think of it as a divine intervention. But really, really think about it as that <laughs> you've erected a world you thought was true. And the universe just comes in to embody you with the truth. And it blows that facade away and liberates you. It might be painful, it might be dramatic, but it doesn't have to be. If you're accepting of the revelations that you receive. All right, no more. Have a beautiful month and God bless you, Leo. God bless you.